This is the Jay Show. My name is Jay Smith, and we are now going about about ready to go into the fifth episode. I have with me my expert, Hatun Tosh. Good to have you back again. Thanks for having me, Jay. It's terrific to see where we're moving with this material. Now we've already done four episodes, laying the groundwork, so to speak. Yep. To get into these 26 different Arabic Qurans, but let's just do a quick review to help the people who are coming alongside us. Also, not maybe there are some new ones who have not really seen what we're talking about. Let's talk about how it all began. And from the very beginning, we have Muhammad. Huh? He was from receiving these revelations from 610 to 632, but the the Quran was not written down that early, was it? So tradition tells us Muhammad claimed to have his revelation. At, uh, from 610 to 632, as he received his revelation, he told people, some people write things down, some people memorized it. Um, it is written on the um, uh, animal skins, on the um, bones. Uh, yet when Muhammad died, he didn't leave book behind himself. There was no codex, no there book. There was no codex. And we thought that this is rather clumsy, that he would not have done this had he been given such an important task. Yeah. Why did he not have it written down to be preserved? Nonetheless, it was written down soon after his death. Yes, uh, from 632 to 634, we've got um, Caliph, who is the leader of Islamic country, Abu Bakr. He is also father-in-law of Muhammad. Um, he compiles the first Quran because people urge him to compile the first Quran. He does this by ordering Zaid bin Tabit to write. Zaid bin Tabit was a secretary of Muhammad. Perfectly and capable of doing that. Nonetheless, he didn't receive the revelations. He had to go to different places to find them. And yeah. we've talked in one of the episodes about he found one verse with only one man. Yeah which is uh, in and of itself a, a problem because you're always supposed to have two witnesses. Yes, okay. so, um, and then when the first Quran has been compiled under the Abu Bakr, it was given to daughter of um, Umar, who was also wife of Muhammad Hafsa. Hafsa. Okay. She kept that Quran under her bed for a couple of um, years. Around 646 to 656, we've got third Caliph Uthman. When they went to war to Azerbaijan, um, people start calling each other kafir, non-believers, right. because the way they recite the Qur'an differently. So there were differences appearing in different Qur'ans, yep. and we also know there were differences also appearing in written texts. Yes. Because what, we're gonna, what we do know is that all those differences were then burned yep. by, uh, by Uthman. So these differences start to appear, we're, we're talking about within 20 years. They're yes, starting around to appear. 650. Yes. 650, so 652. Uthman orders another recension, a second writing of the Quran. Yes, um, he brings community of people together, four people, to make one. Zaid bin Tabid again, yeah. Zubair, Haras, Alas, and Harith. So the four of them are rewriting that which had already been written okay. under Abu Bakr in 632, 634. So 20 years later, they write a second Quran, yes. a second canon, you might say, or a second recension. Yeah. So you have this second recension being written down 20 years after. They write it down, the four of them. They are to write it in a certain dialect, the Qureshi dialect. Yes, um, Uthman makes a claim the, because Quran has been revealed in the dialect of Croatia. And uh, as they make one perfect copy, they burn all the written form of the Quran. All the other ones that all did the other degree. Ones is burned. Yeah. And then around 650s, we've got one perfect copy, which has been sent to uh, provinces of Muslim countries. Nine provinces yes. that we've come up with. Alexand well, let's yeah. just do them. Basra, Bagla, Damascus, Jerusalem, Cairo, Alexandria. We have okay. Aden, uh, Nishapur, and Herat. So yes. those are the nine different provinces that you've been able to find at the time of Uthman. Uthman. Um, yet, uh, we see from the Islamic tradition, they are confused how many... Um, copies send out, some people said four, some people said seven, some people said eight. So we read like Islamic tradition is a bit messy on that. Messy, but, but they would send one person with each copy, right? Yes, one to make sure to preserve it. Yes, people know better. So, so why like were there so many different copies then if they were supposed to be preserved so well with one individual to each province? Well, well, we will be asking those questions. Those are the kind of questions we need to start asking now. Yeah. So these are sent out to the different provinces. So at the time of Uthman, there should be one single copy, no variations. Yes. Okay, that's yes. 652. Yes. All right, well, that's where we're at now. Now we're going to move on, and what we're going to do in this episode, episode five, we've kind of given a background. We're now going to move into the, the different readings.
Yeah. Let's define terms. Let's look at some terms. What are we talking about here? What are these readings? What do they? What do people so, call them? Um, we are talking about firstly aruf, which according to Islamic tradition, um, Quran revealed to Muhammad in seven ahrufs, seven different ways. Okay. Uh, define ahruf. What do you mean by different ways? What are you talking about here? Uh, it's a bit. Islam Islamic tradition is confused about what is ahruf means, but it is different dialects. So Islamic tradition tells us um, Bible, Torah, Zabur, and Injil revealed to people from one, do one gates of heaven. Yet, Quran revealed to Muhammad from the seven gates of heaven, which make it easy for people to recite and memorize. Are you telling me that Muhammad heard Jibril give a recit seven different recitations coming from seven different gates? It's not, it's not Muhammad heard. So story comes in the lines of um, Muhammad received the revelation in one way when he was in Mecca. When he moved to Medina, uh, Muhammad has a conversation with angel according to Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. That Muhammad says, my people are not capable to do in one way. Can you give me in a couple of different ways? And then they have conversation goes back and forward, and then it stops in seven. So as Muhammad and angel makes a deal, and they say, okay, Quran is going to be revealed to you in seven different ways. Are you to saying therefore all seven, Muhammad did reveal it in that? So at some According point in to his Islamic life, tradition, in yes. that 22-year period, he actually told it seven different ways. Yes. Each verse, or each time that there's a difference, he did. He recited it that way differently. And people memorize the, is it like that because we read from the, uh, again, Islamic tradition, there is a conversation um, about Surah 25, Surah Furqan, where um, two people are arguing which one is the right way. And Muhammad says, oh, it's all right, both of them are the right way because Quran has been revealed to me in seven different ways. Let me read what and Buhari and Muslim say, because they do talk about it. Let me just go yeah. ahead and recite it. It says, Gabriel recited the Quran to me in one huff. That's one yeah. singular for ahruf. And I recited it back to him, but I requested him to increase, and he continued to increase for me until we stopped at seven ahrufs. Yeah. This is what you're referring to, and that's yes. in Sahih Buhari. Gabriel comes to me, to him, and said, Allah has commanded that you recite the Quran for your people in one huff. The prophet replied, I ask Allah's pardon and forgiveness. Yep. My people are not capable of doing this. Gabriel came again and said, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in two ahruf. Muhammad said no a couple of more times. And finally, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in seven ahruf. And in whichever harf they recite, they would be right. Yes. Now, I, I hope people are, are, are hearing what we're saying. So it seems what we're talking about is that Muhammad received it seven different ways. Or Muhammad asked to for receive seven it different seven ways. different ways. But uh, it's not, the, uh, it doesn't look like it's how you pronounce it because we look at the traditions and tradition tells the way people were reciting the same surah which made people to... Uh, wanted to fight with other person like in one of the occasion person wanted to grab other person because the way he is reciting and in one of the occasion we read again from the traditions Ibn Kaab or who is the one who's supposed to teach the Quran um, his fake shakes because it is very different and it is the same surah his faith was shaken yeah his faith is shaking because other person is uh, reciting is very different and then Muhammad says that's all right. Yeah. You, uh, we, I remember the story you read of where yeah. one of the individuals heard it, he grabbed him by the back of his neck yeah. and uh, hauled him over to Muhammad and yeah. was very upset. Mom said, no, that's perfectly okay. Yeah. Now, let's look and, and, and we'll put on screen uh, uh, these problems and we're going to, uh, because no one really knows what ahruf means. Yeah. Uh, let's look at the screen and here are some of the questions we asked. So, um, some of the people tell ahrufs are the, on the way you um, recite, it's only the pronunciation, how you recite it, but they would say ahruf is the way it is revealed to Muhammad. So if there is seven ahrufs and the, that's the way it is revealed to Muhammad. Okay, just unpack that a little bit. The pronunciation. Help me here. And let's go to our Arab expert here. Is it not so that in order to pronounce it in very in different dialects, you would have to use vowelization? The a, ah, the u, and the e sound. Yeah, ahruf. The ahruf would have to requi would require uh, the dhamma, the kasra, and the fatah. Yeah. Now, let me ask you as an Arab expert, 
Were, there's, were there any vowelization? Did that even exist in the seventh century? No. No, there were no vowelizations in the seventh century. So how can you have dialectical differences in the seventh century? Let me ask you again, when you read a newspaper in, um, in Syria or in Egypt or in Jordan, don't they keep the vowelization off of many of the newspapers uh, so that those can, be, those can be sold in different countries? And as you read it as an Arab in Libya or as an Arab in Jordan or as an Lib uh, Arab in Egypt, you would put your own uh, dialectical or your own vowelization. Yeah, we need the tashkil, which is the short vowels, to be able to read the word. And the way they do it in Egypt would be different from Syria, the way they do it in Syria would be different from Jordan, and, the way, and, and likewise, within those countries, there are different dialects too, am I correct? Different dialects, but their written would be the same. Okay, can you see the problem here? Yes, but you, we need to remember, because Sahih Bukhari is writing to us around 870, so approximately so, 250 years, after 240 years. 240 years. Afterwards. Event took place. When there would have been, oh, there would have been vowelization in the 9th century. Yes, in 9th century but there were. But not in the 7th century. But because Sahih Bukhari is looking back and then he's assuming in the time of Muhammad, yes, there was the dialect. So this is a historical anachronism. I hope the people who are watching this are seeing, you can't make this excuse that these are different dialects, yeah. not in a consonantal textual form, because Arabic is written in a consonantal form. Yeah. We're going to get to that. We're going to show that. But okay, let's continue on. Now, are the Ahru seven types of verses in the Quran? Is that what's going on? Uh, so, some Muslim scholars say that is what is Ahruf is. Now, is this the same thing as Kirat? No. So, Jay, if you remember, um, when... Um, Muhammad received the revelation in seven different dialects, seven different ways. In around 650s, Uthman said, um, because Quran is revealed in the dialect of Croatia, so we are going to compile the Quran in the Croatia dialect. Yet, we know in 7th century, we had the uh, dialect of Quraysh, Hudayl, Tamim, Hawazin, Faqif, Qinana, and Yemen. So in 7th century, we've got seven different dialects in Medina. Right. That I can understand if you're, if you're just speaking it. Yes. What I can understand is how do you write it? Yeah, so um, it, because it's the continental letters and they didn't have the dots, so every writing should be the same. Yet, according to Sahih Bukhari, who writes 250 years after the event, tells us we decided, because Quran revealed in the dialect of Croatia, we are compiling the Quran in perfect copy in the dialect of Croatia. So whatever was um, Ahruf's before Uthman, Uthman cancelled everything and then he made one perfect one in the dialect of Croatia. Okay, now I, I want to go to my Arab expert again. Uh, I see you're shaking your head. You're seeing that there's a problem here because that's okay with a spoken text. It's not okay in a written text. No. Now what's not the okay. problem here? We need the tashkil, we need the dots. We can't we just depend dots. on a drawing. Okay, and this did not exist. Now we're talking about another thing. We're talking about the diacritical marks. Even the diacritical marks were not this early. We're going to talk yeah. about that later. We'll get to that. Just so you can see, these are seven uh, dialects that existed in that part of the world in the, sev uh, the seventh century. According to Islamic tradition. According to the Islamic yeah. tradition. Uh, but they could not have been written down that early because there was no... There was no uh, script that would have accommodated yeah. this kind of differentiation. Yeah. Nothing that would have been that, that. That's a sophisticated script. It would first need the dots and it would need the vowelization. Yeah. I think it would be helpful to remember, according to Muslims, um, our roof has nothing to do with um, how you write the things down. It is all about how you pronounce it. Understood, but... When you pronounce it, it has to be pronounced. Written reference has yes. to be pronounced. Okay, yeah. let's um, let's go back. To, are the seven arufs just synonyms? Are these just the, the words that are written different, but they mean exactly the same thing? Uh, some Muslim scholars claim that. Yet, um, according to Yasir Qadri, who is the uh, one of the well-known Muslim scholar, he says actually we don't know what is aruf means. Okay, I mean, no one knows what it means. And um, some, uh, I read a couple of articles, um, Muslims would saying, 
oh, this is the miracle of the Quran. It is only Allah knows what it is. <laughs> okay. It's obviously the man doesn't know yeah. that. Let's move to the next screen. Uh, do these ahruf refer to seven different ways the verse can be changed? In other words, uh, possibly the way they're ordered or letter variations. Is that all we're talking about here? Uh, when we look at the Qurans, different Arabic Qurans, we see constantal letters are different. Order of the words are different. That's, I would say, like just looking at the current Qurans we have. But um, again, some Muslim scholars make uh, these claims. Would Muhammad have known all seven dialects? Yes, because he's the one who received them. So he was according quite a, Islamic, uh, he's quite a linguist, Islam. then, is what you're saying. So this man was pretty scholarly. Yet he couldn't, he didn't know how to read and write, yes. Or would you suggest maybe he, when people, he heard different dialects, he just said, yes, just accept it. Whether or not he spoke those dialects or not, whether or not he could even put on dialect, dialects, uh, it, it could be he just recognized them and allowed them. Yeah. Yes, but um, I'm not sure using vocabulary for the dialect is right one because it's just messy, like no one knows what was those things. And historically, it can't be the dialects. Yet, um, that's the Muslim claims. And of course, then the big elephant in the room is this. Which was the dialect? Which dialect was the one that Jibril used, the one that's in heaven? Which is the one that exists in those on these eternal tablets? Because there's a dialectic form that has to be sacrosanct. I guess Muslims would say the Qurayshi would be it. Um, that would be dangerous for them to say it because, uh, so, Quran is the eternal word of Allah. And question is, there was a time and space that this eternal word of Allah just took a place when Muhammad was in Medina, seven different dialects. Yet, we read again from the Islamic tradition, it talks about Surah 2, Surah Baqarah, and Surah 3, Surah Imran, those are the two surahs they will intercede for you on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment. So they are the one who is going to defend you. If, if uh, like I've got hundreds of variations in surah 2 and surah 3, mm. and it is revealed in seven different ways, the question comes, uh, which way is going to defend you on the day of judgment? Yeah, okay. And I guess there, the answer to that would be, uh, we just God don't knows. know. We're just agnostic on that. Yeah. All right. So we, we, we're not, we really don't know which one, Jibiril. We're assuming it's a Quraysh, but we're no, not even we sure what that means. We don't know which is in the eternal speech of Allah, which is in the eternal tablets. Okay. Now let's go to the next slide because the next slide is very interesting. You've done something here, and this is something that you're going to have to unpack. It's, it's a great graph, and this graph looks at the different reading. If you could unpack, because these are the different readers then, uh, that actually change the different texts after Uthman. And these are all yep. after Uthman. This graph is enormously important. This yep. starts to show some of the real problems with these Ahruf. Yeah. So we are starting around 650s when the perfect Quran has been compiled under the Uthman. Okay. As Uthman compiled perfect Quran in the dialect of Croatia, he sent the Quran to lots of different cities. Right. So... Islamic tradition doesn't know how many cities, but when you look at the history, we know there were the seven, nine different cities. Right. So, when you look at the Islamic writings, we see, we see there was the Quran which has been sent to Mecca. It was sent with Abdullah ibn Said. Okay, his dates are 682. 82. He died in 682. So this is after Uthman, which would be 652. Yeah, so this guy goes to uh, Mecca, um, with the perfect Quran uh, to teach people. Right. Okay. And then we've got another um, another Quran which stays in Medina. Right. Um, uh, and then with uh, with this Quran we've got Zaid bin Tabit. Now he is the original. He is the secretary of Muhammad. Secretary of Muhammad who wrote the first recension and the second recension. Yeah. And then um, we've got third Quran in Damascus which was sent to Damascus. It was sent with. Uh, Al Mughira ibn Shahaba. Yes, with Ibn Shahaba, who died around 617. Okay. Okay. And then fourth Quran was sent to Kufa. Give the, let's get the name again. Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulaimi. So Sulaimi. Yes, and Sulaimi died around 690. 690, late 7th century. Yes. And then fifth Quran is in Basra. 
Amir ibn Abdul Qais. Abdul Qais. Yeah. 674 he died. Yes, he died in 674. As Quran goes to Mecca um, with Abdul, uh, Abdullah ibn Sa'ib, who dies in um, late 7th century, from this Quran we've got Ibn Kathir. Don't get confused this Ibn Kathir with the Tasvir of Ibn Kathir. Okay. Ibn Kathir is in Mecca. Um, he lived uh, from 665 to 737. And then we've got, so he's got his Quran. And then we've got two students of him, Al-Bazi and Kumbul. Okay. We've got their Quran. Okay, and they go into the 9th and 10th century and they die. Now, what you're going to show us later, not right now, yeah is that these have differences. They start including differences in their recitation yes. than the Hafs, the yeah. original one, or you might say uh, the one that we use today. Yes. Okay. Let so me, ju let just, me just, just emphasize something. Go ahead. So Ibn Kathir is um, around 737. He died at, in 737. Perfect Quran has been compiled in Medina under the Um Uthman in 650s. So approximate 100 years, approximate 100 years, 80 years, after Uthman, we've got already different Quran in Mecca. Okay, so in Mecca, and within 100 years, you're already getting a different Quran, yes. all right? And then um, in 150 years, 200 years, around six, um, 864 and 903, Al-Bazi and Kumbul. Yeah. So we've got another two different Qurans which was born from one teacher, from Ibn Kathir. So already three different Qurans in the, uh, Mecca within the, within by, by, the, by the 10th century. Yes. Okay. Um, if, if, you, if you think about it, Mecca is very close to Medina and it's approximate two centuries after perfect Quran compiled. And with this perfect Quran, we've got one person went to that area, yet we've got um, three different Qurans. Okay. It looks like the students of those who received it did not agree with their teacher. Yes. Now, now hold on a minute. Stop there. We're going to unpack some more of that. But the, what does that tell you right off the top? Does this a book that comes from God? Or is this a book that's being manipulated by men? Uh, Muhammad made a claim it came from God. But we just look at the tradition and then we see human hand is actively working to contribute into eternal to me, world of this Allah. This is very clear that Man this made. is human intervention. Yeah. These are human changes. These are human uh, induced uh, corruptions, you might yeah. say. Which is very sad because Quran makes very serious claims about people's eternity, yet it's only 100 years of 150 years after the perfect Quran has been compiled. Okay. And then we've got Quran in uh, Medina, which is by um, uh, by Zaid bin Tabit, who was in Medina. And then f we've got like one of the Quran, which is comp uh, which comes from Nafi. He died in eighth century, seven, um, 785. From Nafi, we've got two people, Warsh and Qalun. And then we've got their Qurans. Okay. If you look at the dates, so Medina is where Uthman based. Medina is where the first perfect Quran has been compiled. And the Quran, the different Qurans comes to be exist in um, approximate 200 years or 150 years. It's in the same location where the perfect Quran has been compiled. Um, we've got three different Arabic Qurans. And written. these could be because they just didn't like what was being said. They didn't like the way the word that was used. They didn't like the the the, uh, the theological importations, and so they would change it. Now we've been told that, so what these are not real changes. We're going to get into that and show that these really are yeah. quite substantial changes. But just to give you an idea yeah. of. Mecca, Medina, you have three different Qurans that come later in Mecca, three different Qurans that come later in Medina. What about Damascus? Yeah, and then in Damascus, we've got Al Mughira ibn Shaba, who died around um, 670. And then we've got Ibn Amir, ibn Amir who died approximately 80 years after perfect Quran has been compiled. Okay, from him, we've got two students, Hesha, Hisham. Ibn Zakwan. They are dated 850s, approximately 200 years 
after one perfect Arabic Quran has been wow, compiled. Wow, these are 200 years la later. So you're saying even in 200 years later, they're still changing it. So there's another three Qurans that are disagreeing in Damascus, three that disagree in Medina, three that disagree in Mecca. What about Kufa? Now, Kufa is where we are uh, in Iraq. That's in yeah. what was today uh, be Iraq. Yeah. So in Kufa, um, Uthman sent a person called Abu Abdul Rahman al-Sulaymi. Yeah, he died in 690s. From him, we've got three main teachers. Hamza, Al-Kisai, Abu Bakr Asim. So, they are all dated late 8th century. They are all dated late 8th century. And then we've got their students who have different Qurans. Let's just read their names of their so, students. So, yeah, we've got Hamza's students is what? From Hamza, we've got Khalaf. Khalad. And from Al Qasai, we've got Al Duri, Abu Ali Al Harith. And they are again died in 9th century. century. So about 200 years later. Yes. From Abu Bakr Assam, we've Hafs, got Abu Bakr Shu'aba ibn Ayyash. Yes. So early 9th century. Early 9th century. So the current Quran, which is, has been officialized in Egypt, is the Quran which is from Hafs. Okay? So that's the Quran which in the beginning was sent to Kufa okay. and, and in 1924 that is the Quran has been officialized. Okay, now we want to wrap this all up together so let's just finish with Basra. You have Basra, just give the name of the, of the student after uh, uh, Ibn uh, Abdal. What's the student's name? Amr Ibn um, Abdul Qais. Okay, and he Abu has... Abu Amr Ibn and, al And he has two students Duri. Susi. Okay, Duri and Susi. And so they're again 9th century They're 9th people. century, again, 200 years later. So we've got later. like three people, three different Qurans ends up in um, 9th century. So we have three coming out of Mecca, three coming out of Medina, three coming out of Damascus, nine coming out of Kufa, and another three coming out of Basra. Yes. Ooh, two, 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 two. Add that all up. 3, 6, 9, 12, another 9, that's 21 different Qurans already within 200 years just coming out of those five cities. Yes. We've got to wrap it up there for this episode. We're going to unpack this more. We're going to go into this and look and see what also we have. We have some other three groups that are going yeah. to come out in other cities, but for now, this shows me that this is a man-made document. This shows me there's lots of man-made interventions. Hatun, thanks so much for being with us. Those who've been here, uh, don't go away. We're going to come back, unpack some even more. It gets worse as we go along. God be with you. We'll see you in the next episode.